Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Franklin Smith, and I'm Executive Director of ISAAC, the International Society for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. On behalf of Isaac, I'd certainly like to welcome everyone uh, attending today for uh, our uh, webinar, Dare to Dream, Turning Your Dreams into Future Realities. And we are uh, privileged today to uh, be uh, taking part in a webinar presented by uh, our good friends and experts in the field, Diane Nelson Bryan and Jane Odom. Uh, so again, my name is Franklin Smith, Executive Director of Isaac, and at this point, I would like to turn it over to our Conference 2020 Co-Chair, Gabriella Berlanga, to introduce our speakers this morning. Gabriella, take it away. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first pre-conference workshop series. Um, well, it is my great, great pleasure to introduce our wonderful speakers of today's webinar. Uh, before talking a little bit about their experience in the field of AAC, I want to share that um, being in touch with them, preparing their materials and conducting their trial runs of the webinar, um, it is contagious the way their passion about this topic. And um, I really hope you enjoy this webinar and really take taking your dream seriously uh, as, as I have learned during this time that I've spent with them. Well, for today, we have Dr. Diane Nelson Bryan. She is a special educator profession, uh, professor at Temple University. She continues to be a leader, mentor, advocate, teacher, and researcher. Her work has been recognized internationally, focusing on AAC, criminal justice, inclusive education, and assistive and accessible information and communication technologies. She is the author of Dare to Dream, Turning Your Dreams into Future Realities, and she has presented this workshop that uh, we will have in Mexico, but this workshop has already been presented with a lot of success in uh, United States, Canada, India, Australia, Israel, and South Africa. Her book of the same title was published by Amazon Kindle in 2012. Dr. Brian has been a member of Isaac's lead committee for more than 10 years. It is our great honor. Thank you, Diane. We also have with us Jane Autumn. She is the AAC Language Lab Training and Implementation Specialist for PRC Saltillo. Good morning. Okay. All right, Diana, whenever you're ready. Okay. Let me just unmute. Can everyone hear me? Good, and welcome. Welcome to Dare to Dream, turning your dreams into future realities. We hope that this webinar will serve as a brief introduction to the full day workshop at Isaac 2020. The workshop at Isaac will be much more participatory than can be captured in a one hour webinar. Next slide. We hope by the conclusion of this webinar, you will be able to articulate why dreams are important to all people, including those with disabilities and those who use AAC. 
you'll be able to describe how a clear dream can be developed that can be graphically illustrated and shared with others. You'll be able to describe how dreams can be turned into an action plan that includes positive and possible objectives and the needed resources, places to visit and people to provide needed supports. Furthermore, you'll be able to identify steps to be taken to begin to turn your dreams or your partner's dreams into future realities and how to the importance of enlisting a coach who believes in your dream and commits to supporting you in turning your dream into a reality. And finally, to discuss why follow-up is so critical and how follow-up can be provided. Jane, next slide. Years ago, I asked young adults with complex communication needs this question. How old were you when someone asked you what you want to be or what you want to do? Where do you grow up? Asking this question is just another way of encouraging a person to dare to dream. Next slide, please. When you register for this webinar, you were asked the same question, and hopefully you answered using the polling function. Let's see how you answered this question. As you can see from this slide, 20 to, 22 registrants, registrants and did answer the question. Seven answered that the first time someone asked them, what do you want to do when you grow up? Were five, well, they were five years and younger, wow. Nine said that they were between nine and 12 years old. Five said that they were between 13 years old and 21 years old. And one answered that they were 22 years old or older. None of the respondents asked, answered, no one ever asked me. Unlike you as a group, every one of them indicated, every one of the individuals with disabilities, complex communication disabilities in, indicated, I'm sorry, of your group, no one has answered, no one ever asked me. However, unlike you as a group, folks who use AAC who have complex communication needs indicated, all of them indicated, no one ever asked me. I was both shocked and saddened. I thought about it and I discovered that if nobody ever asked you what you want to do when you grow up, you might never have dreamed about being a doctor or a dancer or a teacher or a cowgirl even. That's what I dreamt I wanted to be when I grow up. And certainly, you would never have begun to work toward turning that dream into a future reality. By the way, I never did become a cowgirl. But when I was in my mid-40s, I learned to ride a horse, which I realized was very much a part of that initial dream. So began the 30-year journey of Dare to Dream. Next slide, please. Daring to dream starts today by first envisioning your dream and then taking the next steps or wheels towards making it your future reality. Hopefully this webinar will introduce you to the process of daring to dream. Next slide, please. So why dream? Meet Carol. Carol is a mother and now a grandmother, an advocate, and was a co-instructor with me at Temple University. She is also a woman with complex communication needs. Carol answers the question of why dream by stating, if we don't dream, take our dreams seriously, make them known to others, and work towards their fulfillment, then you will live according to someone else's, else's decisions and visions. 
for your life. Powerful. Next slide, please. Sadly, people who have a disability and certainly folks who have complex communication are at a particular risk of not dreaming about their futures simply because they were never asked, what do you want to do when you grow up? They are not encouraged to dream and to voice, voice their dreams to others. And if they're bold enough, that's why we say dare to dream, bold enough to voice their dreams to others, their dreams are often not taken seriously. Next slide, please. As persons dream, a person's dream can be big and it can also be quite small. Regardless of their size, a person's dreams are non-negotiable. From our experiences throughout the United States and in six other countries, the themes of dreams are quite universal. They are about desired relationships, a place of our own, and about engaging in meaningful activities. People's dreams are also tied to their particular culture. Next slide. As we draw a person's dreams, and generally we do it in a big, a large piece of paper, paper, we probe. Whoops, I just lost my place. We probe until each dreamer has the time to get their dream drawn. We may ask them, well, tell me more, or what does it look like until we capture their dream on paper. Once the dream is drawn, we ask participants to share their dream with the group. Many times the support person voices the dream to the group. However, they agree to be bold enough. The dreamer is bold enough to share their dream with others. Let's look at a few, of peop few people's dreams. Next slide, please. So meet Leah. Leah is a woman who lives in an institutional setting. She has a rather small dream. She wants to watch soaps 24 hours each day. She also wants to subscribe to a soap opera digest. Now let's hear about Bev's dreams. They are even smaller. She wants macaroni and cheese for dinner at least once a week. It is important to note that both of these women have little control over their lives. That may be why their dreams are so small. Their dreams begin to give them control over at least some aspects of their lives. Next slide, please. Meet Beth. I first met Beth in Canada in 2008 at Isaac's International Conference. She was only 14 years old. 10 years later, she co-facilitated the Dare to Dream workshop at, Isaac, at the Isaac Conference in Australia. There she reflected, as a disabled person, I have fortunately been encouraged to dream from a very, very early age. And I was lucky enough to be at Diane's course in Canada 10 years ago. But what I did notice at school was that my peers were not encouraged to dream. They were rarely asked what they wanted for their future and yet, I believe we all have the same right to make our dreams known and become a reality. She goes on. So here is my dream. I want to drive my own car, live in my own home with my own family. I want to have a job working in AAC social policy. I want to represent Great Britain where she lives, in the Bocce International Contest. I want to run and to visit Australia. Now that's quite a dream. Next slide, please. Meet Jen, Jennifer from Melbourne, Australia. 
Her dream is to communicate effectively and independently at home, at the footy, that's what I think they call soccer in Australia, and in the city so that I can go shopping. Typical woman. Next slide, please. So Jane, what's your dream? So my dream is, um, now that I'm getting older, I found my love of art. And I would like to be able to sell my art somewhere. Wow, good luck, lady. <laughs> but you've got to work at it. Next slide. When you're ready, when, now we heard Jane's dream. You heard my dream. I, you heard Beth's and Leah's. When you registered for this webinar, you were asked, what is a when you were a child was your dream? Jane shared her dream. How about sharing your dream? Using the chat function, type in your dream. Now that may take some time. So while you are typing in your dream in the chat box, we will continue. And Jane will share a few, a few of those dreams when she shares more about her dream. Next slide. All right, now let's take our dream and begin to work to turn it into a future reality. Unlike your dreams, goals are negotiable. Your goal or objective, I'm not sure really what the best term is, so I go back and forth. Your goal must be both positive and possible. If the dream is small, the dream may become your negotiable goal that can be accomplished in one year. So it is possible, one criteria mix. It must also be positive. A goal is an action that drives and guides you towards your larger dream. That is why actions need to be identified. It also involves identifying what resources, places, and people are needed to achieve your goal. This is hard work, the hard work of turning your dream into a future reality. Next slide, please. Beth's dream was extensive and certainly could not be accomplished in one year. So she identified a one year goal. She stated that the job working in policy Meets, excuse me, means starting my own business, she says. So my one year goal is to complete a business plan. My business plan will include strategies to see what synergies there are, to work out how, how I'll market these ideas, plus the nitty gritty things like how I finance my dream. Her one year goal is both positive a piece of that larger dream and possible. It can be accomplished in one year. Next slide, Jane. Back to you. So Jane, can your dream be accomplished in one year? So yes, my dream can be accomplished in one year. Okay, so we will get to the next step. Let's go on for a second though. And that is, if your dream is large and cannot be accomplished in one year, let's first, you may need to work on a piece or pieces of your dream. That's what we call positive. That will be your goal. That is both possible, maybe it can be accomplished in one year, and positive, it's a piece of your larger dream. Not only must your dream be both positive and possible, it must contain action words. In other words, what will you be doing? But let's get back to Jane. Jane felt that it was she could accomplish her dream in one year, so she answered yes. So let's go and take a look at Jane's dream. Next slide, please. Yeah, so I popped over a little early. So yeah, the dream is, is to sell my art, and I have a studio where I make glass. So the picture is some of the glass that I make. And I just moved to a new town, so I'm not really familiar with a lot of um, people up here. I haven't met a lot of people yet because I moved here and we got COVID. 
we all got quarantined. <laughs> 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 the first step, though, I can do immediately is to get my business license in the state of Arizona where I live. And then I'll have to get materials, create the art, and then kind of make some connections. So I'm going to need to know where galleries are and where stores are that sell local art. And it'll be a good idea to meet some people in the community that are already artists or own galleries so that they can kind of help me. So before we go to the next step, next slide rather, Jane felt that her, her dream could be accomplished in one year. So the next step was to identify the resources she needs, which she started to do, the places she needed to go, which she talked about, going to the art galleries in her new community, and people who are there to support her because no one, no one, does it alone. But before we move on, do any of you want to share your dreams? That was also asked of you. Were, were so there any? We, we did get one, so somebody brave enough to share their dream. And Franklin would like to experience microgravity, preferably in the Earth's orbit. All right. <laughs> Way to go. That's a big dream. I'd like to see how he turns it into a, a future reality, and maybe he will. So let's go on to the next slide. So we talked about you have your dream, you have a piece of your dream that is possible and positive, and now you begin need to figure out what you need to make it happen. The first one is resources. Once you identify your one-year goal, you can begin to address the resources that you will need to accomplish that goal. It doesn't just go, Woof, it's there. Examples of resources needed include money, everyone says that, materials, books, transportation, and time. As I say, everyone starts out saying, I need money and I don't have it. However, if nothing other than resources you have control over, everyone has some control over their time that's something that you know despite you don't have money materials books with time you can accomplish finding out where you can get those other resources next slide jane okay so beth noted let me see if we're on the same yep that if my goal is to work in disability policy, I might need to find and visit places where people are actually doing that work. So she's identified some places. Uh, other places to visit might be schools, community colleges, accessible apartments, community centers, art studios like Jane, stores, and many others that I haven't thought of or that we haven't thought of. But remember, you can't do this sitting at home. You've got to get out there to see where people are doing the dream that you have. Next slide, please. But most importantly, since dreams are never accomplished alone, I couldn't have done this webinar by alone. I had good colleagues and friends that helped it happen. You have to identify who you might need to help you accomplish your goal. It could be a teacher, another professional, a carer, a personal assistant, friends, or family members, and much more. Whoever it is, they must believe in your dream. Next slide. So this was Jane's dream and what she needs to accomplish. So Jane, can you expand on each, the resources, the places and people? So, so absolutely. So, you know, as I'm looking at getting my art out there, it, it, again, meeting those people, getting out of the house and actually networking a little, that means going to an art walk, going to visit different studios, you know, just walking the neighborhood and meeting people will really help. So in my town, we have an art walk at the end of the month, every fourth Friday, 
And so I've been going to those so that I can start to meet different gallery owners. I can meet different artists. I've met a couple different glass artists. And so now I'm starting slowly to build a network to get my um, to get my art out in the community so that people can see it. But again, getting that business license was important. Uh, making sure that I have the materials and enough art to sell is also kind of important um, because if people like something, they don't want just one piece. They want they want more of that. And then uh, you know making sure that I do that legwork and and actually meet the people. Okay, great. Uh, let's hear go back and hear about Beth. So next slide, please. So here's Beth again. She's making, beginning to make her dream a reality. As you can see from the photos, Beth has achieved at least one of her goals at Isaac 16, where she was co-facilitating the workshop. She proudly stated, here I am in Australia. She continued, in fact, I've achieved, achieved several of them. I've adapted, I have an adapted vehicle. And some people thought, oh my goodness, that's impossible. You use a wheelchair, how are you gonna drive a car? Well, she figured it out. And I have been learning to drive. I have my own lifetime home. I'm working towards my own business by doing a degree in social policy. I presented England, I represented England in Bocce, and I still aim to represent Great Britain at the International Bocce Contest. Oh yes, you can see in the photo, I can run. In 10 years, Beth is on her way to accomplishing her bold dream. Next slide, please. So, um, Diane Franklin yes. actually had access to the question bar, which I didn't have. So he's going to pop on really quick and share some other dreams. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jane and Diane. Um, just wanted to share with you some uh, attendees out there uh, have shared their dreams uh, with us. I'm not going to mention names, but uh, <laughs> sorry, just lost my microphone. There we go. Um, so one person indicated that their dream is to move to New Zealand. Um, another person's dream is to retire on a farm. And uh, a third individual has a dream, I guess, that could be described as a double-edged sword because their dream is to just relax under a blue sky with no worries in the world. Uh, but then at the same time, they also dream to get a, get a PhD in a in a in time or in a reasonable period of time so that would be an interesting one to to manage thank you franklin and it was good to hear that people were sharing their dreams okay well let's we thought it's over but we've identified our resources we have the goal a one-year goal that's both positive and and possible not over yet. Next slide, please. Got to take our first step. And that means you must determine what you're going to do after a workshop or after if you're going through the quick process here, which is impossible to go through the process here, that you when we turn off the webinar or when the workshop is over, you go home. So what's the first thing that you're going to do that gets you moving towards working on your first goal? And unless you already have a coach, enlisting a coach might be your first step. Next slide. As I just noted, Enlisting a coach is very important and is often neglected, except in sports. To coach comes from the root meaning to bring a person from where you are to where you want to be. That's an interesting description. To bring up, help a person 
go from where they are to where they want to be. Hmm. Characteristics of a good coach include trust, acceptance, empathy, congruence with your thinking. We ask dreamers when we do this in person and when we will do it in person in, uh, in Cancun, we ask dreamers about other characteristics that they want in a coach and how they plan to communicate with their coach. Next slide, please. So we're back to Beth. Beth's first step was to get in place the team that will support me initially, and I'm quoting her, where I work and the resources I need to make this happen. She noted that I have a great team already. Besides my personal assistants, I have Carolyn, who facilitates me to run my team, plus mom and dad. So I need them on board. We will meet in the garden of my house where I have a home office, which will be my headquarters. Next step. Okay. Beth describes her coach. My coach will be my mom. She knows me well. She is a constant in my life. I know I can rely on her. She is experienced in business and wants me to be a success in life. Fortunately, she lives nearby and she's always positive and enthusiastic, yet realistic. Just what I think I need. Next slide, please. So Jane, who do you want as your coach? And why? So in, as, as my coach, a woman named Michelle Larson, and Michelle is a local artist and she owns a gallery. And so she's been really, really helpful for not only like telling me what art would work in, in certain galleries, but also helping me price things, which, you know, can be a little daunting to actually put a price tag on something you create is kind of hard. So Michelle is going to be my coach and she is really smart she's business savvy she's been doing um this for a really long time just opened up her own gallery so kind of knows the ins and outs of how to network right. and how to make a good business plan where and how will you communicate with your coach so she lives in my town so um we actually meet uh every other week down in the gal uh, down in the downtown area where her gallery is, so we might stop and have a cup of coffee or maybe a glass of wine, um, and then we also meet up at the art walks. So uh, I can also then meet people that are coming into the gallery and kind of see what they what they're looking at and what their interests are. So have you asked her yet? I did. <laughs> I did. <it. laughs> and and she said, of course, yeah, she's she's super nice. So and you know that. Just enlisting the coach and asking them, would you be willing to, here's my dream. Will you be, do you believe in it? Do you believe I can do it? And would you hang in there with me and coach me? So it's, a, it's an important first part of the first step and it may be the first step. Okay, next slide. You are now on your way with a dream-driven action plan to turn your dream into a future reality. However, we can't stress more the importance of follow-up. And you see, follow-up, 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 whatever you can do, it's, it's critical, critical. Without follow-up, it is unlikely that the process of daring to dream will get very far. To ensure that the process continues, a plan for follow-up must be in place. Here is where your coach is so important. Follow-up with your coach can take many forms. It can be provided face-to-face, -face, via telephone, or through FaceTime, texts, and other types of social media. If you have the luxury of being able to meet face-to-face, -face, and Jane, it looks like you have that luxury, monthly meetings with your coach can help you celebrate your accomplishments, find possible solutions 
if you meet barriers, or help you identify and obtain needed resources. This is possible, but this was poss possible for a group in India. Since many came to the Indian Institute on cerebral palsy on a regular basis, they were there already. So they could actually add on to whatever their agenda was, the idea of having coaching meetings. However, given great distances, this was not possible in South Africa, Australia, and in many places in the United States. In order to have the support of the entire group, one of the things we did many years ago was set up an electronic listserv that we now call Acalog. And that became a forum, a platform where we could share our dreams, brainstorm barriers, and sometimes to say, well, I have accomplished it. So maybe I need to think about, again, what my dream might be. Uh, in, let's see, in South Africa, follow-up was provided through individual phone calls and visits. And for many, they had frequently a um, frequent cycles, they had an annual retreat. Regardless of the method, the important component is connecting with each person to support them by helping them to recommit to their dream, unless it has changed. In some cases, the dreamer will have accomplished his or her one-year goal in less than a year. If that's the case, it's time to revisit the original dream and establish, if needed, a new action plan that gets the person even closer to their dream. So Diane, I'm gonna pop in here and share. We um, did Dare to Dream here in Arizona at an adult day program. So this is a facility that has a school attached to it and there's a work program. And we were able to work with 14 AAC users at, at this facility where we did a week long Dare to Dream. So we talked about all the, their dreams, we talked about who they were and they were able to share their dreams at a formal ceremony at the end. But what was fascinating, what was absolutely so cool was that the administration at this facility then took each individual dream and built it into that specific person's um, individual service plan or their, their job program. So now they were all working with their job coach to work in some way towards what their dream was. So doing something like if somebody enjoyed music, then you know they were looking at creating playlists. We had one um, person say she wanted to help feed the homeless. And so she was using eye gaze and we taught her then how to interface her device with the internet where she was able to create um, menus and put together ingredient lists so that we could actually um, host luncheons where people could in the community could come and actually enjoy the food that she chose. So it was it was really kind of fun to watch taking a very small dream and building into something that was going to be a life plan for a lot of these, a lot of our participants. And think about younger people. I mean, Beth was lucky enough to have her parents asking, well, what do you want to be? What do you want to do when you're growing up? What's your dream? And they supported her right from a very young age. But think about how this might be, and this is would be my dream, to think about school age kids who are having, uh, who, who have disabilities, and may also have, well, part of their disability may be a, a complex communication need, that it can be part of their transition plan. So we teach them, we support them in daring to dream, and we work with them through a formalized process that's shared with the team that the parent buys into. And this, you know, the dream may change over time, but for the first time, it is actually asking the person to think about a future and to start supporting them in making that dream a future reality. So, as I said, regardless of the method of connecting, the important component is connecting which, with each person to support them in helping them recommit to their dream unless it's changed, to accomplish their one-year goal, and then to 
re-establish a new goal that gets them closer to their dream. Coaching is really the most, <coughs> excuse me, I think the most important part in the follow-up process. And we're studying this, interestingly enough, in Israel, where I had the great joy uh, this past November of doing it. And this was a dream because I spent a lot of time going back and forth to Israel. <coughs> so um, actually doing the Dare to Dream process. And they were there with a team member. <coughs> Just want to get a drink. And not only did it change the process of daring to dream about having a future. I mean, I watched these adults from leaning over and kind of looking like life was beating them down to starting with their, their support person to actually draw it. And then it changed also the support person and how they viewed their own role in the staring to dream person process. Excuse me, I'm not used to talking so long. So um, that takes us to what very quickly the process of dare to dream and why it's important. Next slide. So we hope we've accomplished the objectives of introducing, and it is an introduction to Dare to Dream. So it really experienced the da how Dare to Dream really works. We invite you to join us at Isaac 2020 in Cancun and to participate in a pre-conference workshop. Come with a partner, go through the process, and leave with a dream that can become a future reality. Jane will be there. Maria, who you haven't met, who's our bilingual translator, will be there, and I will be there. So to conclude, I guess, we hope to see you there. Next slide. Thanks and gracias. We hope we should have some time, I think. Yeah, actually, we're good. Um, if there are a few questions posted in ch the chat, we can begin to take a look and answer them. And if we run out of time during the webinar, we will answer the remaining questions posted via email. So Jane, do we have any questions? So that's going to be Franklin is going to need to come on and share any questions because he has access to that. <laughs> okay. That function. So uh, we, we do have a um, we do have an initial comment that's been typed in, and I'm sure uh, it, it probably could be framed as a as a question, and it relates back to uh, Diane and Jane what you said earlier about the um, profound positive impact that that dreams can have on the dreamer. There's also a uh, a, a profound impact on the person who is asking the person to dream. And I guess my question seeing that comment would be, you know, what sorts of impacts have you seen on, on people who, you know, are in the immediate uh, bubble, if you will, of people who use AAC and, the, and, and the, the crossover positive impact that it's had on both? Well, I'll start off with one. And that's the most freak, the most recent one with me. When we went through the process in Israel, and I had a Hebrew translator, and we would go back and forth, we asked, as the process was going on, we asked the, the support people, whether it was a parent or a person, uh, actually we had parents there, we had siblings there, and these were all adults, did they know did they ever know that this was the person's dream? And I would say at least half of them said, I never knew that this person had this dream. We've, we're following it up with some research now. Um, and we're asking, how has it changed your role? And these are most service providers, support persons. And we're coming up, it's, it's changing their role. They, first of all, were never 
they never even thought to ask a person. These were all, as I said, all adults uh, living all over in the northern part of Israel. And so they didn't know that these were hopes and dreams for the future. And they started thinking, well, how do I, I if I were doing a operating under, uh, let's say, a medical model, I would diagnose their problems and I would set up these remediation or intervention strategies. And they had to rethink how they could be the champion supporters of the person. And for them, it was very exciting. For some of the parents, it was very frightening. Uh, they were, some of the people were in more sheltered communities and they wanted to live outside of this place called Kfar Tikva. And, you know, for years they've been told that, you, don't, you know, we don't have the needed supports in the community, this is a safe place. And they're hearing their adult sons and daughters saying, I want to live outside. I want to be able to go to a movie. I want to um, have a relationship. <laughs> Came up a lot which is not surprising, these are adults. And it frightened the parents. So we have to recognize that for some, we're asking people to, the, the, the people who were helping the person formulate the dream, or at least listening and drawing it, it changes their role. And they, I think, are gonna need, and we're finding this again in Israel, unfortunately it's been a, put on hold a bit because of the COVID-19. <laughs> Um, but we recognize that the support people are going to need some support and training to make that shift in their view of their roles. Does that answer give you one example? That's great. Thank you. Jane, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? So when we did it here in Phoenix, it was interesting because, again, we weren't, we weren't working with the parents as much as we were working with the support staff. And to have that facility then take each and every one of those dreams so very seriously was something that was totally unexpected. We did not even think that that might be a possibility. Uh, so it was it was really interesting. And I think it gave validity to each and every individual that their dreams really, really mattered and that they were taken seriously. And they, you know, every single one of them stood up a little straighter, sat up a little straighter and was a little bit more proud of what they were doing and they were more um, inspired to, to work towards that dream. So we had one young woman who um, said that she wanted to be a speecher. So she wanted to teach other students how to use their AAC because there was a younger school attached. So she called it a speecher and we just thought that was hysterical. And so it really motivated her as a teenager to start learning to use her device better because she was kind of reluctant to be that kid using AAC. And then all of a sudden she got very, very inspired. So it was, it was wonderful to, you know, to watch the whole process as it is each and every time we do it, Diane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have uh, the opportunity to uh, buy the book called Ghost Boy, it's written by a, a man named Martin Pistorius, who I met in, in, um, South Africa, as part of the work that I was doing in South Africa with Dare to Dream. When I first met him, he had just come out of a 16, oh, Jane is showing it, terrific. He had just come out of a 12 year coma and he was not able to walk, he was not able to talk and we could talk about all the things that he couldn't do. And he had no way of communicating. And so he was at the University of Pretoria learning to use a communication device. And when I first met him, he just was wearing a bib. Now this is a 20 year old man wearing a bib in a slouched over and drooling. And he looked barely alive. And whenever we asked, about daring to dream, his father would answer. And I gently but affirmatively said, we'll take the time, but I want to hear what Martin has to say. He was just using, I forgot the, uh, the grid. 
which was available on a, on a, a laptop. And he was using an eye pointer, a laser pointer. He was very, very slow, of course, and, and he was just beginning to share what happened to him, number one. And then we said, okay, that's the past now. What is your dream? And his father really wanted to answer. But we kind of coached his father not. And his dream, you have to read this book because he is now, and I had the fortune, by the way, of being his critical friend or coach from the United States when I left. Um, I've developed a, a deep friendship and love for, for this man who um, was sexually abused while he was in a coma, who sat in front of television watching a stupid cartoon as he was coming out. And no one knew that here was a man that was coming alive. Uh, until he learned how to communicate. And he wrote this book. He's now married. He also has a child. <laughs> We've watched. He has learned how to uh, drive an adapted car. And his first dream was just to have a dog and to live back with his parents in his home and uh, to maybe learn how to better communicate. So they, you know, he, this was a man they thought was never going to come out of a coma. And it's kind of, you know, it's no one, not many people have that dramatic outcome. Uh, but each one is a, um, is, is, is an amazing, fabulous experience for the person. And anyone who watches the, and has the, um, the pleasure and the trust to watch it unfold is it's not without some problems, you know, everyone meets barriers, but uh, as long as there, the process goes on and there's someone that believes one, at least one person that believes in dreams and that the dreams are non-negotiable and supports them in making the plan come alive. It is, um, it's one of the most exciting and uh, privileges of experiences that I've had. And I'm sure Jane has that same wonderful feeling. It is it's really a privilege to watch someone take a little bit more control over their lives and to dream and then to work on it. Thank you, Diane, Jane. We do have a, a few more questions before we, before we get to them though, I'll just mention to everyone that we've shared uh, the three email addresses, Diane, Jane, and Maria's on the chat box. Um, so uh, by all means, anyone out there who wants to get in touch with you guys, uh, your email addresses have been, have been uh, shared with the audience. And I'll also just mention to the audience that a PDF version of the presentation slides have been uploaded to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar user panel. So you can certainly uh, download them from there and you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, so we have uh, another question here uh, asking, are there materials or questionnaires to help the person determine a dream? Uh, so on the, I run the AAC Language Lab and um, we do have a section on there called Bricks. We couldn't. We, we didn't want to call it Dare to Dream. We call it Bricks, which is building relationships in communication um, and, and communication supports. So on the AAC Language Lab under curriculums, we do have what we used at the Gompers program here in Phoenix to not only train the staff on being a good communication partner, but the questionnaires that we use with each participant for them to kind of figure out who they are and guide them into deciding what their dreams were. So you can certainly email me for more information on that. And then we've also included more than just the Dare to Dream, where we have the reference to Diane's book and the link to how to get that book. But we've also kind of gone a little bit further and talked about um, some skills that they might need, such as how to email and use social media and how to be on the internet safely, how to register to vote. It's kind of important here in our um, <laughs> states right now. Um, so all kinds of um, supporting um, skills that we thought might be might be useful as folks are taking those first steps. So that's on the AACLanguageLab.com here in the United States. 
We also have a chapter that I wrote that's translated into Hebrew. And it will be translated into Spanish for the conference that we can make available. At, um, I guess a few, still a little bit in the draft form, but it's pretty close to um, being finished. So if you want to, um, anyone who wants it, I can hopefully upl uh, upload it. And that gives you some information. Also, Jane and I have been, we have lots and lots of wonderful testimonials from people who've gone through the Dare to Dream process. But those are testimonials. We've decided that we would like to do some more uh, quantitative research looking at outcomes. And um, I think we're going to present it at Isaac, a little bit of it at Isaac, at the Isaac conference as a separate, uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, presentation, research presentation. In doing that, we actually developed a little questionnaire so that we could actually be systematic and get in the information. Uh, I can get it to Franklin and he can upload it. I would also suggest that anyone who is serious about wanting to do this, that you look at the some of the research on graphics, graphic facilitation. You'll notice that the further back there is this little poster and it's a big poster that over the years we just used to hand draw it and it got very sloppy and messy but it was fun and useful. We developed a, a, a poster so that it's that you can actually ask the person what does your dream look like? Tell me more and as an and it's amazing, people who are learning to use AAC, I've never seen them be more motivated to use their devices. Where so, and I remember doing this with Martin. So, where do you live? You say you want to live back with your family home. Well, what what do you what do you want to be doing during the day? Tell me. Well, he wanted a dog, so I drew a dog. Well, what do you want? What what do you want to do with a dog? Do you want to? Is he going to be a support dog? Uh, what do you want to do? We actually kind of almost say so. Close your eyes, and who do you want to be? Who in your future? If you can dream, who do you want to be in your lives? So we kind of guide them, and then we draw it. And it does, you don't have to be an artist. Jane is much better than I am. Uh, where do you want to? What? Where do you want to live? You know, some people wanted to live in a farm. Some wanted to live uh, where there could be transportation, accessible transportation. So you probe it and you draw it, or you have someone, if you're lucky enough, to have actually a graphic facilitator who can make it look beautiful. Uh, who do you want in your life? Close your eyes, and if you don't want to close your eyes, imagine it. And then we probe with them. So it's a guided process. And uh, and we don't put words, or initially, we ask them, so what does it look like? And sometimes they'll rely on a support person to voice it. But it's still there. Um, their thoughts, their visions, and we literally draw it. Does that kind of answer the question? I, I, I think it's uh, I think it did a really good job answering. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we are also just a, a moment or two away from the end of the hour, and uh, as is uh, typical in Isaac fashion, we want to be uh, respectful of everyone's time. We've had a couple of final questions, which I'm going to try and merge into one because they're all kind of on the on the same theme. And then once you guys have had a chance to answer, we're then going to hand it over to Gabriella Berlanga, our Conference 2020 co-chair, for a final wrap-up and thank you. Um, but on behalf of Isaac, Jane and Diane, thank you so, so much for doing this. Um, I think from all the questions, uh, I think people uh, 
uh, got a lot out of this session. So let me just wrap up, uh, as I said, a couple of questions really around the whole concept of, um, Diane, I think you mentioned in the presentation that this, this whole process be done at or around the time of transition from school to adulthood. Um, but we've had some people commenting about uh, is that an appropriate time or should it be done earlier? And some people asking about how early would you start with children and youth? Um, so a few things all built there around age. I think early on, look at, look at the, the results of our, our polling. Lots of people were asked with no act, what do you want to do when you grow up? I mean, people start thinking, did I become a cowgirl? No, but at least I used to ride around on a, on a uh, I start thinking about my future. And so it wasn't that dream. And then I went to college and it opened up more opportunities. So I don't know that, I think the earlier, as early as the, a, a young person can understand, what do you want to be with when you grow up? And then you can get more into the, the the process of so what does it look like and turning it into an action plan is probably when the person's a little older. I think definitely before they leave school, <laughs> but asking the question early, early on, what do you want to be when you grow up? It gives them a sense of of beginning to dream about their future. And I think but when when a lot of what we've seen in a lot of the schools is when students become teenagers, oftentimes they don't want to look different, they don't want to use their device, but when they're working towards something that is meaningful to them, yeah. uh, then, then that kind of crosses that barrier and makes it a little bit easier to, to encourage them to communicate independently, yeah. It is in a way, Daring to dream is reflects a, a different model of disability of understanding. Uh, it's uh, understanding what is a disability, and it's not something that we fix any longer. I mean, you know, we, we as therapists and teachers, our, our thinking was, and and probably partially should continue if you're in school to develop skills and the more skills, but think about it as, as I have that, I have the right to dream, just like every one of the audience out, other participants out here. And it's really then learning to support the people, the, the dreamer. And um, I don't think you could, um, I think it's reflecting a whole movement within the, the, the disability community. And so they are the ones who, in a sense, have pushed us and said, don't just look at the fact that I can't talk or I can't walk or I'm not smart, but let me teach me how to have a purposeful life. And that's very individual, but with, there are universal themes. And it's the people in your life, the places that you want to spend time in, and the people. And that's a different way of thinking about how we can help configure supports around an individual. Wonderful. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Jane. Uh, we've kind of run out of time. Uh, I know we ran over a couple of minutes, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, for you guys, we're, uh, we're, we're happy to oblige. Um, and I also want to give a, a big thank you, of course, to everyone who was in attendance today. Um, and thank you to everyone for asking the, the fabulous questions that you asked, yep. because it's by a process of asking those questions that we're able to uh, uh, get more stuff out of our presenters and, yeah. and get them to uh, share some of their uh, their personal experiences. And I think it just makes uh, the entire webinar stronger for everyone. So with that, and having already said my thanks on behalf of Isaac, I'm going to pass it over to our Conference 2020 co-chair, Gabriella Berlanga. Gabriella, take it away.
Thank you, Will. Diane? Sorry, Gabriella, we've yeah, we've please. lost your we'll we've lost wait. your microphone. Are you unmuting? Oop. Oop. Sorry, I, I think we're probably having a bit of an internet uh, connection at at Gabriella's end. So, uh, Gabriella, we didn't we didn't catch what you said. If you can hear me, we did not hear what you were saying a moment ago. Can she type it into chat? Is that possible, or is it too long? Oh, there you go. I think. Yes, you can hear. Oh, sorry. Oh. So I'll repeat it. Because uh, so Diane and Jane, on behalf of ISAC's Conference 2020 Organizing Committee, we want to thank you, uh, and we want to thank everybody who attended this webinar. And we really hope you can enlist for the full workshop that will be an amazing experience when it happens in Cancun. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Bye and gracias.